Well, that was much better. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Geek Blend, and welcome back to another review of The Mandalorian Season 2. This is Season 2, Episode 3, Chapter 11. The Heiress is the title of the episode. I did not get a review out last week because I was under the weather, so do expect to see a review for Season 2, Episode 2, last week's episode, up on the channel very soon. And thank you all for being so patient while I'm trying to get better and recover from the sickness that I had. And no, it was not what you think it was, it was something else, but there will be more regular content popping up on the channel moving forward from today on. Now into this review. And as a word of warning, there will be spoilers for this episode, quite a bit of spoilers. So if you guys want to go in this with fresh eyes, non-spoiled eyes, you might want to pause this review, go watch the episode, and then come back and watch the review after that. So let's get into this. Of course, we see the uh, Mandalorian ship, the Razor Crest, limping to this planet. I believe it's called Trask or something like that. He's taking the Frog Lady to meet her people, and also that she has information on Mandalorians that are nearby on this planet. So we land, sort of. The ship is completely effed, and it goes in the water instead of landing on the platform because it comes in really, really hot, and the thrusters go out, and a crane picks it up, puts it on the on the landing pad, so the, the, the ship's okay, but he gets off the ship, and there's some on Calamari to greet him, and he says, can you fix it? He's like, I can make it flyable. I can put gas in it, if it'll hold gas. So the Mandalorian gives him a thousand credits and moves on his way. The frog lady reunites with her husband, and the eggs... And we see that little reunion. And then we also see a person in the distance. It's Saucer Banks' character watching from afar this time while they're doing this. And the Mandalorian is pointed to the inn uh, to go talk to some people in there to get some information about the Mandalorians on this planet. So he goes in, talks to the waiter after getting some food for the child, and says, I'm looking for more people uh, that look like me. And he says, there was people in here with Beskar before. Uh, I've got a person over here that can take you to them if you want. And so he brings over a... An, another guy and it's a corn species it's got the tentacles on his face and stuff that's the the species is titled corn and he says i can take you to them it's going to be by boat and it's going to cost you so we cut to the boat scene from the trailer and this is one of the biggest scraps i have with the episode we have speeders we have ships we have all kinds of transportation in this galaxy why are we using boats the only thing i can think of is that this planet is like a vast majority of water so this is not Moncala. This is another planet. I'm guessing this is the planet of the Corrin, or it's a habitable water planet for the Mon Calamari and for the Corrin. But the actual planet the Mon Calamari are from is actually called Moncala. But the planet we're on today, I believe, is called Task or Trask. I believe that's the name of it. I don't can't find any information on the show because it just came out, and I wasn't going to skip through the entire show to figure out what the name of the planet was. But it's a water world. It's what I'm guessing. It's mostly water. But of course, that's why they're using boats. Again, I don't understand why. It's a huge gripe of mine that they're using boats. But I believe they're just using this boat to set up the scenario so the Mandalorian can be rescued by the other Mandalorians that are near on this planet. So as the Mandalorian and the child are on the boat. So while they're on the ship, I'm thinking the whole time, okay, I guess they're just going to take them there or whatever. But of course, that's not the case. They tell the Mandalorian that he should check out this feeding of this creature. And they open this hatch in the middle of the ship and they get close to the edge. And of course, they knock in the child in his little ba bassinet. They knock in the Mandalorian and then they close the cage so he can't get out. And they're trying to drown him. They're like stabbing him with spears so he can't come up. I'm guessing his weapons are waterlogged or something because he's not using his flamethrower. He's not using his Whistler missiles. He's not using his missiles. He's not using his blaster. Grab this thing while you're trying, while you're trying to, you know, just start shooting or something. Like he's not doing anything. He's just letting them drown him. Of course, the other Mandalorians fly in. They save him, of course. And as they pull him out of the water, he tells them like, hey, could you go help the child that's in the belly of that creature? Uh, the one that goes in the water. We see blaster shots and like missile shots from under the water, like little explosions. So his weapons were not waterlogged. Why didn't you use your fucking weapons when they're trying to kill you? He, the child is dying. That's your mission. And you're not putting up a fight at all. And of course, people will argue, well, hey, he's being stabbed with those blades. He's got armor on. Just put your hand up with your flamethrower and, and shoot your flames up there. Give you a, just a minute to maybe get like something out where you can cut that thing open. Like you've got all this technology on your armor. Why aren't you using it? It made no sense. It was just a reason for him to be rescued by this sect of the Mandalorian. So the Mandalorian come in, 
immediately one of the helmets I recognize, and it's Bo-Katan, played by Katie Sackhoff, and that character was first introduced in The Clone Wars. I will say, if you guys are watching this episode, and you've never seen The Clone Wars, and you're very confused by the people you're seeing, and you can tell they're characters you're supposed to know, definitely go back and watch The Clone Wars, or maybe go on YouTube and find some recaps for the Mandalorian stuff, so you guys can get a better idea of who these characters are. And also, maybe while you're doing that, look up Ahsoka Tano, and find some history on her as well, because... It's going to be a big reveal coming up with her character, and if you don't know who she is, it's not really going to be that big of a deal for you if you don't know the character. But I would definitely recommend The Clone Wars, that's one thing, and Star Wars wise that I will definitely recommend. Uh, the Clone Wars, all the seven seasons, uh, the last season was not as good, but the rest of the seasons were good, I definitely recommend it. And if you have Disney Plus and you're watching The Mandalorian, it's already there, so definitely go check it out. So. Mandalorian is introduced to these Mandalorians face to face for the first time. He's talking to them, and all of a sudden, they take off their helmets like they did in the Clone Wars. And of course, he's freaking out. He's shocked. He's thinking this is another situation like the Marshal from episode one of this season that they have Mandalorian armor, that they're not Mandalorian. They explain to him that they are not part of the Watch, is what they call it, which in the Clone Wars, it was called the Death Watch. That is the, like, sect of the Mandalorians he has come from. They are a zealot religious group of Mandalorians that were trying to bring that back the old ancient ways, which includes keeping your helmet on and doing specific things that other Mandalorians wouldn't do. Like these Mandalorians are not part of that. We know Bo-Katan, she was born on Mandalore, she was raised on Mandalore, she fought on Mandalore, and the Empire took over the planet and forced the Mandalorians off the planet, except for the ones that stayed behind and betrayed their own people. I'm not sure if they'll touch on that one in this, but if you watch Clone Wars and then Rebels, you will understand that quite a bit. That storyline is played out in Rebels. I will say this, they did a really, really good job with Katie Sackhoff's hair and her style. When she took off her helmet, she looked just like the character Bo-Katan from the Clone Wars. Of course, the character was modeled after her. A lot of the voice actor characters were modeled after them in the uh, Star Wars animated shows. You could definitely tell. They did a good job, and it was really, really awesome to finally see her in live action. She's one of my favorite Mandalorian characters from the entire Star Wars saga. Mandalorian says that they're not Mandalorians, or he doesn't want anything to do with them because they're not doing the way, this is the way, you know, his way. So he takes off and leaves. Uh, he's going back to his ship. He gets attacked by some of the Corrin that were family and crew to the people on the boat that was destroyed by the other Mandalorians. And they're like, oh, you killed my brother. And he's like stands there and does nothing absolutely nothing there's like five or six of them only one i saw had a blaster again you're in a situation where the mandalorian we've seen in the past where he's taken multiple people out but he just fucking stands there and of course the other mandalorians fly in and rescue him now after they've rescued him they're like we really need your help on a mission and he says he's trying to find jedi uh, to take the child back to the jedi that's why he's here to find them so they can help him find the jedi and she's, of course, like, what do you know about Jedi? He's like, nothing. And she's like, if you help us with this mission, I'll help you find a Jedi that I know. We already know who that is. So their mission is to get aboard this Imperial transport that is transporting weaponry from Mandalore to the Empire uh, via this planet. It's like a black market trade that's going through here. They're actually going to fly, get in the ship, and take the ship or take all the weapons off of it. The scene where they're actually taking the ship is really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Really great fight sequences, battle sequences. Like the hallway sequences with them shooting the stormtroopers and stuff is really cool. Uh, that was one of my favorite parts of the episode was this whole sequence of them on the Imperial cruiser. They get back to the cargo hold to take all the stuff off of the ship. And they're radioing the cockpit. And they tell them that they're not taking the stuff off. They're actually taking the entire ship. So instead of any help coming for the Imperials, uh, Moff Gideon comes on to talk to the pilot. And he's like, no, we're not doing that. You know what to do. Long live the Empire. So the pilot, like the commander of the ship, kills the two pilots and he forces the ship down. He's taking it in the water. So the Mandalorians have to breach the cockpit to get in. And there's like five or six stormtroopers with heavy repeating blasters. And the Mandalore like risks his life for the first time in this entire like ship heist uh, to take out those guys so they can get into the cockpit and take over the ship. And they do. Uh, one thing that was cool I did like about this episode is that after they've got the Bo-Katan, has the Imperial Commander by knife point, and she's looking for the Darksaber. We know she's looking for the Darksaber. She says, does he have it? And he's like, well, if you have to ask, you already know that he does. And so she's like, well, you're going to take me to him, blah, blah, blah. And he commits suicide. I'm guessing there's some kind of electrical system in his body, but all of a sudden we see like 
electricity running through him and he dies. So I'm guessing it's kind of like the cyanide stuff that the um, Nazis did in World War II to kill themselves when they're going to be captured for information. I did like that. I thought that was kind of cool. So our group of Mandalorians gets the transports, gets the weapons, and they thank the Mandalorian. And they're like, Bo-Katan tells him, you know, I won't forget this. You will be remembered. I'll remember you when, because uh, they're going to take back Mandalore. They're going to um, reinstate Ma Mandalore the Great. They're, they're going to bring back the old ways. And she's like, I, I won't forget this kind of thing. So, you know, their paths are probably going to meet down the road, I'm guessing. bo tells the Mandalorian where Ahsoka Tano is. And now we go back to the ship and we leave and we take off for the next episode. I was thinking maybe at the end of the episode we would get like a Ahsoka Tano reveal. And she's like meditating and then her eyes popped open maybe or something like that. But we didn't. They're going to wait and give us a reveal in the beginning or the middle of the next episode. Maybe. Not sure we're going to see that next episode. We didn't see... The Boba Fett thing just yet. I don't think he's going to get to Ahsoka right away. I think it's going to be at the very end of the next episode or the beginning of the episode after. I'm not sure, but we'll see. But I enjoyed the episode. It was much, much better. The previous episode, which I will talk about more in my review for it, was one of the worst of the entire series, if not the worst. Uh, episode one was decent, not great at all. This one is the best of the season and the best we've gotten since episode six of last season. Definitely second on my list of episodes for the entire series. A lot of issues with it, though. The Mandalorian not using his weapons. Him not fighting a whole lot when they're in the Imperial transport. Uh, him basically having to be rescued by the Mandalorians twice. But like I told somebody I was talking to after the episode was over, Bo-Katan and these, these Mandalorians have been trained a lot longer than he has. And they've been through a lot more. So they're going to be a lot more powerful and a lot more knowledgeable on their weaponry and how to get out of a sticky situation like that. So I would let that pass. But I did enjoy the episode. Still had quite a few issues with it, including the boat. But other than that, I did enjoy it. Child's really not in it that much. It's Right now, it's just there for set decoration, I guess. And to cut to him and have cutesy noises and stuff, that's about it. But I guess we'll, we'll get more into the child stuff when we get to Ahsoka and the Jedi. But uh, overall, decent episode. I will say that. If I had to rate this episode out of 10... I'd probably give it a seven and a half. That was probably going to be the best score out of all the episodes besides episode seven of last year. I'd probably give an eight and a half. I'm sorry, episode six of last season. I'd probably give an eight and a half. But yeah, I'll give this episode a seven and a half. I did definitely recommend it. You guys definitely want to check it out. If you're a fan of The Mandalorian or if you're not sure if you want to watch it, there are some redeemable qualities about the show. It's been very, very boring as of late. This one was not. I did enjoy it. But we'll see where it goes from now. It's really going to have to impress me quite a bit more than this to get me back on board. And like I've said from the beginning, I'm still in the camp that I'm hopeful that we get good Star Wars. That's what I'm praying for. After the sequel trilogy and a lot of the books and comics we've gotten from Disney Star Wars, we need to get some good stuff. Because there's been a lot, a lot of really bad Star Wars since Disney took over Lucasfilm. So hopefully moving forward, we will get a bit more of that. What did you guys think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it okay? Let me know down below in the comments. I do appreciate you guys watching. That was my review for Season 2, Episode 3, Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, now on Disney+. Plus. Or if you drop Anchor, you can find it somewhere else if you don't have Disney+. Plus. Also, if you want to see a bit more of a discussion on The Mandalorian, I will leave a link in the description of this video for Raging Rhino's casual rage stream that he has coming up this morning. And we will be doing a much bigger breakdown of the episode on that show. Uh, we'll be doing a live stream for a couple hours over there, just mostly talking about the Mandalorian exclusively. So if you guys want to go check that out, I will leave a link in the description. And if you guys aren't subscribed to Raging Rhino, I would highly recommend subscribing to him. Also, Lost Jedi 22, who's also on the Raging Geek Jedi show with Raging Rhino on Saturday nights. He's doing his own versions of the Mandalorian review. Tuscan Bob reviews the Mandalorians. Definitely go check out his channel. Link is always in the description for his channel and Raging Rhino's channel as well. So definitely go check them out. Leave a like on the video. It does help us out. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see some more. And hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on everything we release here on the channel. Also, links in the description for our social media, our Discord, and all the ways you guys can support the channel. You can become a channel member. You can use Patreon. You can use Subscribestar. We really appreciate anything you guys give to the channel. It really does help us out quite a bit. And I want to say thank you to all of my current channel supporters. All your names will be scrolling below me. And of course, they will be at the end in the outro, like always. But I want to say thank you guys very, very much for all you do. I appreciate you so much. I'm Jeff. This is the Geek Blend. And remember, if you geek about it, we speak about it. I'll see you guys in the next video.